Hi, everyone. Today we talk about a phenomenal woman named Isadora who was at a monastery on the right bank of the Nile River near Thebes. We don't actually know if she was from Egypt or not because none of the accounts is really telling in that regard. But we do know that she was a fool for Christ's sake. And this is even more interesting because this occurred in around 350 AD, although even then we can't be exactly uh, sure about what the date was. We often think of the fools for Christ like Andrew of Constantinople or perhaps many of the Russian saints in this regard. So we see that even early on there were people that were taking St. Paul's dictum quite seriously about being fools for Christ. She entered the monastery and, although accepted, was immediately disparaged by most of the nuns there. Now, on the right bank were a number of convents, and on the left bank of the Nile, using it as a natural boundary, were a lot of monasteries. The priests and deacons were allowed to come to these convents, but then only on Sundays and only by invitation. Isadora, however, was someone who really thought little of male or female, and she became someone who was actively going against what all of the normal monastic activities would seem to be. Whereas many of the nuns wore cowls around their heads, Isadora wore a rag. She was rarely seen eating with the rest of the sisterhood, instead was uh, observed there scraping the crumbs off the table and eating those. She would accept all of the menial jobs that no one else wanted to do and was often seen scrubbing and scraping in different parts of the monastery. Isadora was indeed someone who was completely obsessed with our Lord Jesus Christ and not in any way obsessed with the things of the world even in a holy place like a monastery. Now there was a man named Pitarum who was in one of the monasteries that was up the river and he was very much like St. Zosimus in the story of Zosimus and Mary of Egypt in that he was a bit proud of himself because of all the ascetic struggles he had undergone and the things that he was able to accomplish. Well an angel appeared to him one day and said, you really think yourself something, don't you? He said, well, I've come to tell you that there's a woman in one of the women's monasteries that far surpasses anything that you've been able to accomplish. And so Pitarum went and was allowed into the monastery solely because of his elderly age, not because he was necessarily a priest or a deacon. And he wanted to introduce himself to all of the sisters. And so the Mother Superior brought them all in, and he stood and he looked at each of them and he said, is, is this everyone? And she said, yes, this is everyone. And he said, no, I don't think so. There seems to be someone who is missing. And so the Superior of the convent said, oh, well, there is a woman named Isadora. Uh, we don't know where she is right now, probably in the kitchen, but there's so something wrong with her in the head, so you really don't need to see her. And so Pitarum insisted that Isadora be brought to him. And so they went and found Isadora and told her to come, but it was evident that she wasn't going anywhere. She wouldn't move, and so the nuns grabbed her forcefully and brought her into the presence of this elderly monk. Immediately upon seeing her, he threw himself to the ground, making a prostration before her, and recognized her as a holy ama, or mother. All of the other nuns were astonished at this and couldn't believe what they were seeing. And so they said, look, you, you've got something wrong. This woman is, again, there's something wrong with her in the head. And the elderly monk brazenly said to them, actually, there's something wrong in the head with all of you because this woman is a very holy woman who is full of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And after a while, an amazing thing happened. All of the nuns began 
confessing to how badly they had treated Isadora. One nun said, yes, I, I took a bowl of food and dumped it on her head. Another said, I hit her in the nose so hard that it made it bleed. And on and on and on it went. In fact, it was said that that day salvation came to this women's monastery. Peterum, having been very happy that his own pride had been shattered by the grace of the Lord and seeing this lowly fool for Christ, went on his way. But actually, for Isadora herself, it began to be a little tiresome from all of the apologies and reparations that were trying to be made to her from all of the nuns in this holy convent. So eventually, she packed up what very little she had, and she left the monastery, never to be seen or heard from again. It's indicated that she probably reposed around the year 365, but we don't know for sure. We don't have her relics. We only have this story recorded in the Lausiac history, which of course is read in most monasteries uh, every great Lent, along with the Ladder of Divine Ascent by St. John Climachus. It goes to show that the Fools for Christ, they really didn't care about anything involving the world. Isadora would have been happy just remaining as she was in the convent and probably not having to leave at the end. But the Lord, who sees all things, saw that this woman's story was worth repeating down the ages. And so today we remember the holy Isadora, the fool for Christ's sake who is now known only to our Lord. Bye-bye.